Greetings from London, this is Mariam Sharif and welcome to the Style Moguls podcast. This week we have a very special Fashion Week episode. Joining me from Milan, Dina Yassin, who is the founder and creative director of Efro & Co. Welcome, Dina. Hello, hello, Mariam. Thank you for having me here. Firstly, I'd like to congratulate you on, uh, on your MBA. Thank you. Thank you Absolutely so much. Absolutely wonderful, wonderful. It's so much. how is so, Milan and is it the first time you've been there? No, actually, Milan is, uh, was a second home for me. I always come here for Fashion Week. Um, and uh, since COVID has hit and pandemic in general, I haven't been back for quite a while. So this is my first trip post COVID. And right. also besides Fashion Week, I came here for my graduation. Yes, uh, wonderful, we, wonderful. Tell us about that. Well, I was studying at MIP, which is the um, Graduate School of Business for Politecnico di Milano, which is quite a prestigious school here in Italy. And yes. uh, I was happy to say that uh, I was accepted last year uh, on two scholarships and um, thinking that, okay, I'm getting ready to move to Milan and, you know, living here for about a year and completing my education while also, uh, you know, immersing myself within the fashion scene here in the, in the, in the city. However, uh, COVID had better plans. And, yes, uh, I think it changed uh, everybody's me, course of, and path, didn't it? Exactly. It kept me back in Dubai and uh, um, out of a class of 55 students, I was the only one who couldn't make it to Milan. Oh. And I did oh. everything online. Um, it was, it was, it was, I can't tell you how it felt. It felt really bad. Yes. It felt like I was missing out on something. But yes. um, I have to say that my fellow classmates all made me feel like um, I was still very much a part of the whole oh, group. And, uh, wonderful. You know, even though that they were, they were here and, you know, they were also facing the challenges of not being able to go to campus and studying remotely from home being yes. in the city as well and whenever they could they were going to class but I was very much still involved I was on online all the time when I needed to and uh, I got through it and once we finished um, I was like I have to come for my graduation there is no way that, that you're I gonna miss that yeah <laughs> and say thank you to all of them and yeah. meet them finally put a face behind the people that mm. I've been seeing online and uh, my professors everything and um I can't tell you the feeling was really surreal because it's something that um, I was actually looking forward to accomplish accomplish for the longest time. And now I've, I've done it. I've actually... When did you start this journey of styling and fashion? Fashion started when I was a kid, when I was like yeah. four, three years old with my, through my late father. Uh, my late father was an economics advisor. He, right. he was very much... He loved what he did. He loved working with, you know, uh, rectifying the problems of scarcity around the world and how to come up with projects that will make use of limited resources of a country and all of that. You know, I grew up around that a lot. But like, um, what I could say is he was also very much a fashionista in our Ah, oh. <laughs> so you got it from him. him. Yes. <laughs> He loved his clothes. He was our stylist at home. Oh, it was wonderful. Me, my mom, and my sister. My brother came a little later, mm -hmm. but it was three of us, and he just loved to shop for us. And I remember just being that little girl that would be tagging along with him as we go into boutiques, and he'll be like, Dina, take a look at this dress, look at the stitching, look at the finishing. And this is, we're talking about 80s, you know? Yeah. And it where were you living? Me. Sorry, where was your childhood? Dina? I grew up in Abu Dhabi. Oh, in Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. So you're born in you're born and bred in Abu Dhabi? No, I moved to Abu Dhabi when I was one. I was okay. born in Sudan, and Sudan, uh, yeah. And uh, I moved to Abu Dhabi when I was one. Right. And, um, you know, I was my sister came along. Uh, I guess five months after we moved. Oh my right. Okay. Neither, we have a year and seven months apart. So I was a little over a year when I moved to the UAE. My mom was very pregnant with my sister and then Dalal came and uh, yeah, and we were just, we got there, you know, end of the seventies and then throughout the eighties, there were just a few boutiques, but I can't tell you the quality of clothing that was coming in. 
Yeah. And then, um, on top of it, those were the times where my dad would be getting um, catalogs and we'd be choosing stuff from there and ordering in from Germany and from London and everything. My dad, by the way, was educated in the UK. He oh, graduated right, from, right. Um, he graduated from Leeds University. Oh, Europe. wonderful. Okay, okay. Yeah. So you have a connection in, in England as well then. Yes. <laughs> I actually lived in the UK for three years as well. Oh, wow. So where did you live? Where were you, where I were you lived staying? in London. I lived oh. in London um, and uh, I studied at Hammersmith and West London College for a little bit. Yeah. I was mostly the West End type of girl, and I also lived in Pimlico for a little bit. Oh, lovely! Uh, yes. A little all over place, all over London. I wow! Hung out in Camden, I hung out in West London, uh, you know, '90s London kind of thing. How was fashion in the Middle East, and you know, in the '70s and '80s? Because were were you much uh, heavily influenced by European fashion and what was happening? Very much so. Yes. I, I remember my dad used to love to show us, um, you know, when when runways would be showcasing in Paris and stuff, and we'd see people like Iman and Khadija and all these mm. supermodels back then, and uh, Yves Saint Laurent and everything. And we get my dad would get really inspired. And next thing you know, he's going to these very limited boutiques that were around at the time, but he would find pieces that looked similar to that was those on the runway like the right. power jackets and stuff like that for my mom and and then for us it was always those really nice frou-frou dresses and sometimes really cool overalls I, I was a tomboy so he knew that okay Dina likes her overalls she loves her sneakers she loves yeah. Her. And yeah as we were growing more boutiques were coming in more stores there weren't that many malls but smaller shopping centers yeah where they'll have you'll find the Thing here and there um, but we grew up with uh, this whole uh, thinking that quality over quantity yes so absolutely good quality clothing that I cannot tell you were passed down from us to our cousins to our other yes. cousins I mean when yes. I see certain pieces right now sometimes I see like a baby wearing it that yeah. I'm just like, this looks like something I used to wear when I was a kid. And I know yeah. that my mom was so efficient with that whole hand-me-down thing. Yeah, so, I think also the, the quality of fabrics and the, the cuts, they were fabulous, but it was also how people would look after their clothing. Exactly. And because, you know, they were expensive, or like you said, like definitely quality um, over quantity. And I think people just loved, like I was just saying to you before the interview, that people loved taking care of their clothing you know they, they respected their clothing they didn't yes. abuse what they wore um and very you know they would maintain it they would look after them you know mm -hmm. yeah big difference and big difference before especially like I remember when we used to go to school and we had uniforms but my dad was very much like including my mama actually did your mother did your mother enjoy fashion Oh, she loves fashion. She, did. <laughs> she loved being dressed by my dad. Yeah. She oh, loved, wow. like, my dad would come up with something, be like, this is <laughs> going to look amazing on you. And my mom would just, she got so used to that, that after my dad passed away, it was a little bit like, okay, who's, you know, yeah. you know, sometimes she'd, she'll be like, um, well, can you guys choose something for me? Mm. And, you know, because she got so used to that. Yeah. So, even yeah. though she does a nice job for herself, but she was very much so, she loved that moment. She loved that whole, like, oh, wow, I'm getting that. Yeah, uh, it is, it's just a beautiful feeling time. when someone styles you, yeah. actually, and <laughs> being a stylist, that's, that's what, that's what we do. I wear some of her stuff that my dad got. I have them in my closet, yeah. some of her pieces, and they're, they're just priceless. Yes. Um, even when we used to get ready for school, I remember like my dad would be like, check if your socks have holes or any of that stuff, because if they do, they're going straight to the garbage, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I'd wear my shoes, he'll flip them and see if there's anything. And if there, if I did, he'd be like, why are you destroying your shoes? I just bought you yeah. new shoes, Dina. Why do they have holes? And I was always running around with the boys and everything. I didn't care, yeah. you know? Uh, but and now I understand. I understand that this is what he, what it was all about yeah. being so pristine about every single thing. A, a pride in your appearance, really, yeah. isn't it? In your presentation, how you appear for the world. 
I think they kind of exactly. you know, I think the same thing how my grandfather was my maternal grandfather who uh, bless his soul had a, a dry cleaning business oh. he was so pristine with about you know how mm. everything is ironed how everything is even when you see him he was so put together and mm. uh and yes, he'd wear the suit, but then he also had the little turban that he had to wear around his head because that is part of his culture. Yes, yeah. But everything was so nicely put. Yeah. So this is something that was always passed down. Yeah. To us. So, so did so you study a, a traditional route, though, even though you had a, a flair for, you know, or a curiosity for, for uh, style or? Well, um, how can I say this? I'm a third culture kid, okay? I... And I'm sure you know what that means, basically, you know. Third generation, raised, right? Yeah, third generation. Yeah, third generation. Away from my own culture. And so I was exposed to three or more different cultures at the same time. Mm, yeah. Um, and while being, well, while still being instilled with who I really am and my heritage and everything. So what you see right now is a fusion of everything. Yeah. Of everything. My where I was born, where I grew up, where I lived, where I originally come from. It's all a fusion of all of that and the person that I have grown up to become. So when was your first kind of styling adventure then? When was your first, I would say, was styling assignment that you were given? styling assignments I guess when I was a kid at a birthday party we had a, uh, it was a birthday party where we, 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 I believe the game was to make an outfit out of newspapers and then do a fashion show. And I remember <laughs> that you're paired with, with, a, with someone and yeah. uh, I, I made an outfit use, with a newspaper and, I, and we won. Oh. <laughs> and I think I was like nine years old or something. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Yes. So you took your passion and how did you translate it? So when, is, when did you start taking your uh, fashion style seriously, seriously. Well, I have to be honest with you um I started modeling at 14 I mean right fashion houses here in Dubai not fashion houses but like an agency that would have like you know they those stores would like to have boutiques and uh, fashion shows and uh, my mom would be like okay you know let's get you to do this and let's get you to do that but you know I remember when my mom was really excited to get me into these things and my dad was like you know um it's all great that she's into fashion, but you know, I don't want her to really, really delve too much into this. I want her to do other things besides, yeah. you know, despite Parents, that, yeah. how much he loved, he loved clothes and yeah. style. He also still had that traditional, um, as outfit. many, many parents do because they, and I think in those days, the, uh, fashion uh, subject or studying fashion was wasn't as serious or as because you know as academic it wasn't yes. a career path for yes. many um, exactly. and I think they always like with my own parents having having a little bit of a, uh, a reservation absolutely yeah um, and then um, I just carried on and looking at it like it was just a hobby so how was modeling what did modeling teach you when you were um, in the Middle East, how was that modeling? I just was... felt like I was a like a I guess something huge, you know. And it was me and a few group of people that were mm -hmm. chosen to do these shows, and uh, you know, it felt something big, like you know, like it's it was in a it was like was it um, uh, brands from abroad or was no, were they in house? No, 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 not no brands from abroad. Okay, within like within the UAE had brands from abroad right sold in their stores you know yeah. i mean but what time, a lovely experience to be exposed not, yeah yeah well, lovely experience to be exposed by photographers yeah. and makeup and that creativity yeah. you know exactly exactly and yeah. uh, we had we had fun we had fun for what it was and then i moved to the uk and when i moved to the uk i actually signed up with a modeling agency there oh right right okay at the time it was uh a select uh, model. Oh yes, yes. I've... Their offices was in Chalk Farm at the time. Right, and right. Through them, I was able to do a few uh, great jobs. Uh, modeled for the likes of Benetton. Oh, um, wonderful. Uh, jazz swimwear, the, like, brands that died off, but Benetton yeah. was still around, but not as big as it was. Uh, I did a few editorials. I did a few 
runways, not that major runways, but you know, a few little here and there. But then came to realize that it wasn't really for me. Right. Yeah. That, um, it was as much as I loved fashion. Uh, maybe I was still too young to really make a decision. Mm. I was only 17, 18 when I moved to London. Um, right. Yeah, that's very young. Yes. And Quite brave as well, Dina, though. Very brave. <laughs> yeah, I was too young. I was still... Uh, was, your, were you, was your father still alive? Did he encourage you for that? My dad, my dad passed away 16 years ago. Okay. Uh, but yeah, my dad was still pushing me to complete my education. It was right. very much like, Dina, education, education, education. And mm. I was just like, yeah, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Three years into London, and I was dying to go to... Uh, central St. Martin's. But, oh, yes. Um, yeah. Cost of living was a bit too high. And um, us having uh, our American status, my dad was just like, all right, you're done with the UK. We're moving to the States. Mm, okay. Like, what? No. And, you know, I was so like dreaming of having this. Oh, you had just set on it. Yeah. Style of London. And here we are. And they're telling me you're moving to Virginia. And oh, right. I moved to Virginia and, you know, okay, change is inevitable and you have to accept and it. And how old were you when you when you moved? To Virginia? Yeah. I was 19 turning 20. Wow. 19, 20, I would say. I was kind of, yeah, starting your adulthood. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 And um, moved to Virginia with my aunt. We got enrolled into a university. It was a, a bit of, a, I won't say a culture shock, but it was a shock for me because it was this campus and I felt like I was in high school again um, because I came from London where everybody just lived their life. It was very cosmopolitan. Yes. And then here I am coming to Virginia where you're on campus and everyone is all over each other's lives and hmm. gossip and all of that. And I, it's I, very, I different, it. very different, very yeah. different. But it was okay. You know, I got in and I... I I was accepted into Old Dominion University, uh, business law major. And, uh, uh, you know, my parents thought, okay, she's got a set. This is what she's going to do, blah, blah, blah. They left uh, two weeks into the program and I, I decide that I don't want to do business law anymore. And okay. I didn't good good that you realized at an early stage, right? Like yes. you could have knew that this is not for you because you could, no. have, gone, cause you could have gone on that path, couldn't you? Yes, exactly. But what I did was I didn't tell my parents that I was. <laughs> oh, I just decided, let me carry on with my liberal arts until maybe I find something else to do. So do oh, all right. okay. classes that are, uh, you know, mandatory and maybe along the way something right. will pop up. Right. So maybe look at explore the minor subjects. Yes. But yeah. Yeah. And luckily I had a nice counselor and he said, yes, take your time. Nobody really declares their major after the until the end of the first year. Yeah. So I was like, OK. And then I just was doing all the mandatory classes and my parents obviously asking me, so how are how is, you know, are any law classes, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they're <laughs> coming along. I'm still doing what's mandatory. And and then eventually I found a, a little uh, fashion department in the university. Ah, uh, yes. So I went ahead and, and decided that's it. I'm going to declare my major now. I okay. found fashion merchant. It was a small, small department and I signed yeah. up and I was really excited. And then my parents came to visit a year later. <laughs> <laughs> they found and, out. Okay. And that was when I, I broke the news and my dad didn't take it too well at the time. And he was just like, how could you do that? This is your future. You're yes. with it and all of that. And then um, later on, he was just like, okay, no problem. You know, you want to do this? Okay, do it, but do it the right way. Get a minor that's going to support your major. Yes. So I said, okay. So I went ahead and pursued international economics, given that my dad was an economics mm. advisor and did that. But uh, there are more surprises that come, they leave. And then um, I decided that as we were going on and doing all of this, that 
the fashion department wasn't that challenging for me. Right. And okay. I felt like I needed to be in a more Big. fashion environment. Yeah, because Virginia, it's not really like a fashion capital, is it? No. So you know, you're not going to find that. I was uh, only creativity. To yeah. To visit my cousins and you know all of that, everyone. Yeah. But it wasn't really what was inspiring me. And I remember I met this girl that summer was visiting her sister on campus and we were discussing talking about fashion schools and right. she was saying that she how she wanted to go to this fashion school in New York and I was uh -huh. telling her about the possibility of doing a study abroad program with the fashion department in the current university I was studying and little did we know that the meeting that we met that summer allowed us to explore uh our ideas in the opposite direction. So instead of her going to New York, she decided to go to the fashion school that I was interested in going to do a study abroad in London. Right. And I decided to move to New York City, to go to Fashion Institute of Technology. Yes, the best, and yeah, yeah. I didn't tell my parents, I just applied. And my parents came to, follow, to visit the following year. And at that time I was like, you know, I'm going to go ahead and just do what I need to do and get accepted. And once I get accepted, when they come, I'll let them know. Then you'll, you'll surprise them again. Yeah. yeah. And before they came, I was working, I don't know, three jobs, saving money, because I was thinking New York City is going to be yeah, expensive. expensive. Yeah. And when they came and I told them they had a fit, they had a fit. They didn't take it too well. Mm. My mom was just like, what are you thinking? And why do you make our lives difficult? And mm. we're trying to get you to be together with your sister here. Why can't you be like your sister? I'm like my sister's a biology major, you know, she, right. she, she fits here. She fits right in, but yeah. I don't fit right in here, you know, it's a yeah. great school and everything. And I made so many wonderful friends, but this is not my calling. You know, yes. I need to be somewhere that, is inspiring me and, they're like, and my dad was like you're always swimming against the tide mm. why why don't you just you know and I'm just like you can't ask me why I want to go to to right right and he's like New York is a difficult city look we got your sister a car let's get you a car you know <laughs> you go. I was like I don't want the car I, yeah. I want to go on foot I want to be in a city I want to experience all of that and I was like I I was in London I left London because you told you asked me to but now right. I'm here I want to go to New York yeah. City and I've gotten accepted and I, I I'm gonna go and uh, my mom was like fair enough I'm gonna let's go and visit the school I'm flying out from New York anyway. So um, let's go visit, let's go see it. Because my dad left earlier and we went with my mom and she saw the school and she was just like, all right, fine. This is what you wanna do, you do it, you know, but be prepared for all the challenges and don't come back crying to us telling when things don't go your way. Mm. They're just protective parents, of course, but they were. They were. Um, sometimes um, parents also challenge you to see if you really want it. So yeah. I know that my own father, uh, you know, they question you and they ask you and they're really, they, they make it difficult to see, like, do you really want to do it? So, and that's a you know testimony of your strength as well. Yes, absolutely. And then I went to New York City and uh, my life started, my whole fashion world started there. I was studying in a wonderful fashion school. I met yeah. amazing people. I immersed myself in the fashion scene. I I was, I had that at, at the right attitude, which was um, don't take no for an answer. I never take no for an answer. Mm. There's always a question that follows that no. If someone says no to me, I'm always like, why? You know, yeah. Yeah. what is Curious. The yeah. behind that no? Because if there is something that you can, that can prove to me that your no is valid, then I'll let it be. But if mm. there is, you don't have, something that will cognizant that will make that no valid for me i'm gonna keep quite asking you you know mm. and uh that got me really far actually and i was able to work with a lot of big names and i was able to uh, work during fashion week i was able to build myself i got a lot of experiences i graduated twice um and then uh you know 
lived in New York City for 11 years. And wow. even when my sister graduated from Virginia, she came and moved to New York. Oh, and so she joined you. <laughs> with me, like Wonderful. Two, later, two, two and a half years later. Mm. And then um, after that, uh, after dad passed away, my brother came and moved to New York City as well. Right, right. We, okay. bought, we bought a place there. We, we, we got in Brooklyn and... Uh, you know, we carried on with our lives. And then after that, from New York City, we decided, okay, you know, reception hit and everything. So we decided, all right, let's go back to the UAE also to be with our mom, because after dad passed. Oh, so she still stayed? In Abu Dhabi. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because my grandparents were still living with her at the time. Oh, right. Okay, okay. She had her responsibilities and um, yeah. we, we wanted to go and be supportive and also get to spend some time with her because I was living away from her for 16 years my yeah sister about 14 years or 13 years my brother about six years you know so we were just like you know us going back to the UAE was not only just to uh, bring back the memories of our childhood but also mm. to to uh, bring us close but I think you really need to be reunited yeah we I think you need to kind of... reunite yeah and really understand that uh, the importance of being together yeah and, um and that's what we did and to be exactly. quite frank i didn't expect all the uh major um major accomplishments that came out of moving there i managed to build a good name for myself in the in the scene in the fashion scene in the yeah uh, scene in uh in the entrepreneurship scene uh in the middle east i was able to do a lot and, and that's wonderful because you need, I think that would be a nice kind of injection of what you kind of learned from, you know, New York, from the West, and you kind of applied it to the Middle East. So you have, uh, you're a founder and a creative director of Afro & Co. Can you explain what that meaning is and when did you start that company? Well, Afro & Co. Is, is a clothing brand, a street style clothing brand that is um, inspired by... Uh, street aspects and retro and vintage aspects of east africa because originally i am from eritrea i am east african and right so i was using everything and anything that that is from that uh, area of the continent to inspire my collections and t-shirts and sweatshirts and actually worked closely with a very good friend of mine in new york city who we used to work together um you know love at Hines, who's very talented uh, he was helping me a lot with the graphics with the designs we did a lot together we we were able to do collaborations with brands such as the levi's uh, non-for-profit organizations including uh, idris foundation uh, it, um, uh, that worked directly with refugees um, right Sung Blungi work with uh, um, challenged children in uganda uh, we've done quite a few uh, great projects through. Yeah, it's through wonderful. And then um, came to a hiatus now because uh, COVID hit. And not only COVID, there was a lot of challenges uh, trying to expand the, the brand in, in the Middle East uh, region. And uh, post-COVID, I felt like, okay, you know what, maybe it's time to just, you know, take a step back and look at what yeah. needs to be done because my whole outlook towards fashion started to change as well. Mm. Um, I love fashion. I breathe fashion. I do everything fashion and I respect it. But at the same time, uh, I don't, that respect comes with a price as well, because we're noticing a lot of, um, how can I say, a lot of side effects from, our uh, our needs yes. for for unnecessary products out absolutely. there. Absolutely, I think um, COVID has highlighted some of the issues from you know the workers in the factories from and and you know not getting paid to the conditions that they work through yes. to the to fashion being one of the you know biggest polluters uh, of environmental you know um, effects. It, it really is and has a big responsibility as much as everybody enjoys fashion, which we all love. Uh, exactly. I think people have decided to be a little bit more conscious and mm -hmm. kind 
yeah. and especially with this awareness of what COVID has done in this last mm -hmm. year. I think people's eyes have opened, you know? Yes, totally. And uh, so I decided to go back to school. I mean, COVID was, was that uh, gateway for me. Yeah. And uh, not only that, I, I was also surrounded by a lot of inspirational people, many friends and close friends, and I would call sisters as well, uh, who were saying, Dina, you know, you're meant to do a lot more greater things. So, yeah. you know, pushing me to go and give it my best. And they're like, maybe it's, you built such a big name for yourself. Maybe it's time that you go back and really reevaluate everything. Mm. Um, maybe going back to school maybe teaching because I was I am I was teaching at the time at the Dubai uh, Luxury Institute and right. uh, uh, you know Fashion and Luxury Institute uh, I taught there for almost six years and Wonderful. Uh, it, it was good fun um, but you know they were just like you have all of that under your belt um, maybe go and see what more you can offer yeah I think sometimes you have to I think COVID has allowed us to kind of uh, assess where we want to be and yeah. you know for the future like of course where we are but what else can we do and I think again you know shaping our minds and our hearts have to be aligned absolutely, with, absolutely. You know? and I think a lot of people are feeling that so usually when you don't know what to do you kind of have to go back to the drawing board don't you yes exactly yeah. so uh, I challenged myself and uh, I never thought an MBA was in the in the pipeline. I always yeah. thought it would be a master's program, but not an MBA. Mm. And getting accepted by a prestigious school in Italy, mm. um, when they wrote back to me and they said, "All right, you've got you're accepted. You've gotten a scholarship and a grant, basically a double scholarship." And I just was like, "What?" I was like, "Wonderful an MBA," and. I have no background in finance. I have no background in accounting. I have no background in statistics, just purely marketing, some economics, some mm. political science. You know, I just didn't think, I was like, wait a minute, did they make a mistake or something? And, um, and I still remember the first day of our classes and I was sitting online and literally listening to the professor I'm not lying, Mariam. It was business statistics and right. tears were rolling down my eyes. And I was like, what did I just sign up for? Oh, wow. Because I didn't know what I was doing. Mm. But, and I, I almost gave up. But um, the professors, the faculty were all very supportive and they were very much like, we know why we gave you these uh, you yeah know, sometimes I feel that you have to if something's easy and it comes to you easy yeah. like I was recently um, having this conversation it it's it's not going to challenge you so you have to do yeah. something that will challenge you and your Absolutely. personal growth you know you you have to if it's easy for you and if it comes easy or if you think oh I can do it that's not good enough I think it has to be out of that comfort zone for you yeah. to develop to the next level so you know and that feeling of like you know oh my gosh can I do it I think that is that is the the you know the correct uh, way of of kind of finding at that feeling Absolutely. so for you that, that I think that's was that's the best thing and it was good because they all spoke to me and uh, you know all together we had that conversation over you know teams and then they were like all right let's revisit in the next few months and see how you feel if you right right yeah maybe we can explore other options yeah and uh, a few months later and I was they, into you know, it yeah they were like how are you finding it now I'm like actually enjoying it yeah enjoying the challenges and yeah yeah I found myself doing things I never thought I would and yeah uh, being around what's the best thing that you've learned from your MBA <sighs> best thing I've learned is there were so many things I've learned but I think the best thing that I've learned was time management definitely mm. I was always good with time management but I learned to utilize it to the best of my abilities mm. to make the most out of it and how to be a quality leader that mm. is something that 
came along because of the pool of people I was surrounded by. Yes. And seeing the ethics that they came with. Yes. Picked up so much from them. Um, you know, I can't tell you, like I was chatting to one of my classmates who, when we had a, uh, we had a project, a negotiations pro project, and he just blew my mind. I think he blew everybody's mind because wow. his negotiation skills were out of this world. And I didn't know whether to laugh or to <laughs> take it seriously, but I even told him when I saw him that that class, that negotiation yeah. uh, moment, yeah. I learned so much from him. And mm. I literally took down so many notes just from yeah. that experience and I think people who are like you said from different cultures and different heritages and all from all over the world or you or, or just on that higher level or wanting to learn yeah. that is in the environment where you that is the learning process right that's yeah. where all of it comes together because you that's it. you have to have good people around you you have to yeah. have people that from that same mindset for exactly. those to encourage each other as well and that exactly. to immerse yourself in learning absolutely and mm. then I came into this whole um, Italian uh, approach of education with a very subdued uh, background. I came from a background, you know, American education, which is everything is very, um, how can I say, straight to the point, short, yeah. di direct, mm. uh, we're very, you know, not that there's anything wrong with that, but this is yeah. what I've been used to but into something that's more theoretical and mm. really dissecting every single aspect of it. And yeah. I didn't know what I was doing wrong in the beginning. Yeah. But yeah. now I have to say, I appreciate that theoretical. Yeah. I think it's like the Italian way, isn't it? You can, they're kind of, it's like romancing the subject, mm -hmm. you know, um, and really getting, um, you know, you're having a relationship with your, with your, with your art, with your work. So yes, I think yes. it's a very different approach. Yes. Yeah. And I have to say that I have a lot of respect now for the whole yeah. theoretical approach, philosophical approach, mm. everything. I, I look at things in a different light now. Yeah. That's yeah, absolutely. Approach. Fresh eyes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's what education does, doesn't it? Gives you a different perspective. Absolutely. Uh, uh, how do you think the future of fashion is or will be in the UAE, in the Middle East? Well, I have to say that the Middle East is thriving. It's thriving mm. a lot. And a lot of opportunities are, are presenting themselves in the industry. That being said, I still feel like there are, they need to invest in bringing more experienced, mature fashion people who know what they're doing. It's great to have the whole young pool and fresh yeah. and everything, but I feel that it lacks that structure. Experience, yes, yeah. Experience, yeah. structure, yeah. Because not the young and fresh people, it's great. They're coming yeah. with innovative ideas, which is fantastic. But, you know, the older structure yeah. can see see it through so that it can yeah. grow and thrive yeah um, and that is lacking that right. is really lacking yes mm. it is the city the country of, of the future the region of the future yeah but to make it the region of the future you have to understand anything that needs to to grow needs to be well uh, maintained and the only way it will be well ma maintained is by having people of experience for sure um, what's your favorite era by the way what's what your favorite era like which is your favorite era. decade of fashion oh. ah. see i was born in the 70s i was born in 77 i love right. the 70s but yeah. i think my favorite era would be um the 20s oh uh, yes i love the 20s i'm a huge fan of Josephine Baker. Yeah. I love the style that, uh, you know, the silhouettes and the, the whole flapper looks and everything. I think yeah. that was nice. And I like the whole androgynous style of the women then. Mm -hmm. um, I really appreciate androgyny very much. I think yeah. that's got, you know, the fact that women can wear trousers and, and pull off that, that kind yeah. of 
manly look, but still look very femme fatale. I think that's really beautiful. Yeah. So if somebody wanted to enter the fashion industry, wants to become a stylist, what advice would you give to them? Uh, let's see. I just feel like right now it's advice is probably taken not taken that literal anymore because I feel with being part of this whole instant generation everyone yeah. is thinks that they know it all oh of course social media I feel that yeah. um everybody it, you know we had this discussion that with social media everybody thinks that they do know it all they know they can copy certain aspects of style but that's not styling you know but that's not fashion wrong, but there's nothing wrong with picking up a book mm. and reading and yeah. really understanding and really feeling what it has to say and what it has to offer. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's more worthy than just seeing pictures, to be quite frank. I yeah. mean, it's to see so maybe studying it more, maybe studying the history. And really. So if somebody it, wants to start like a career like yours, what advice would you give them? Take your time. Mm. Embrace the slowness. Enjoy every bit of the journey. Yeah. Don't expect everything to happen instantaneously because if it happens instantaneously, it'll be taken away. Just yes. like uh, yes, easy come, easy go. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I'm from the 70s as well. So yeah, absolutely share those thoughts and sentiments, mm -hmm. you know. Really kind of enjoyed. I think our growing up and enjoying fashion was completely different because you weren't influenced by social media you really had to explore yourself you learned from others you learned from your peers you learned from your surroundings you learned from your culture your heritage I mean uh, being South Asian you know my parents had such a rich culture yes. that, you know embracing that and enjoying the colorful beautiful patterns and mm. just layering that effect mm. um, you know personal style you know I also find that I always say, you know, know thyself, but I say know thy style, because once you know your style, you kind of know who you are. And mm. it's so important. The first aspect of, of anything is to know yourself. Mm. So any um, final fashion tips for, our, uh, for, for those who are listening, what would you advise them? Fashion. Your styling tip or fashion tip? Well my whole outlook is always just be yourself yeah be yourself don't try to be someone that's trying to impress and what if people don't know how to be themselves what what would what advice would you give them take your time to get to know you you only have you in this life mm -hmm. you know take Absolutely. Your time to know who you are you've been brought into this universe for a reason you might as well invest that time on you you know yes so yes. if you don't want to take the time to get to know yourself, no one else will want to get to know you, quite frankly. Yeah. What is your definition of fashion? What, is, what does fashion mean to you? Fashion is art for me. Fashion is a way that I express my everyday challenges and beauties and emotions mm. of my life. It's a whole roller coaster of everything mm. fashion is, is is just life for me you know it's life and what would what does dina want to do in the future where would you see yourself in like you know five years time what is what is it that you would like to do well, or see yourself would, living even where, well i where, have a few projects down the pipeline um you know i i want to finish my book i want to uh, work on a few projects, that, you know, personal projects that uh, hopefully we'll be putting it out there very soon. But for the most part, I, in five years, I just want to be happy and content. That's mm. keep it as simple as that. Just keep doing what I love, but at the same time, be genuinely happy within myself and continue to accomplish goals and reach for the impossible. That's it, you know? Yeah. Wishing you all the very best for the future. I look forward to seeing you soon and uh, take care of yourself. Thank, thank you. Thank you. So you. Much, thank thank you. you.